Sarah Wood. I'm an associate professor in the English department. I also serve as writing program administrator. Slide. A quick overview of what I'll be chatting with uh, all of you about in the time that I have. I'll give a brief overview of the written communication component of the LAC. So forgive me if this is all very old hat to all of you, but just to make sure we're all on the same page. And then after that, I'll talk through the three pathways that or the three options that students have for completing that requirement. All right, so um, the written communication category of the LAC requires that students complete six credit hours of writing coursework. So there are three ways that students can uh, complete that particular component of the LAC. Option A is uh, Law 1 with a Supplemental Academic Instruction Course, English 132, plus a Law 2 class. Option B is law one plus law two, and option C is law two plus law three. I'm just using the course attributes here, um, but you might also see this referred to by the state language of CO1, CO2, CO3, um, but I'm just using our UNC attributes here. So option A is sort of the, the lower pathway with support, option B is the most common, and option C is the upper pathway. Um, this next slide just shows you the sort of suite of choices and options with actual course prefixes here. So for law one, there's one course, it's English 122. For law two, there's a variety of courses. And for law three, it's English 323. Okay, so the first option, uh, the one where they take law one and law two with that supplemental academic in instruction course, English 132. Who should take this option? So really anyone can take this, but it's um, really targeting students who might need a little bit of extra support in order to successfully complete English 122, which I'm sure many of you know is a highly predictive course uh, for retention and persistence. The English 122 and 132 uh, sections are, are linked together. It has the same instructor and there's not really an extra, you know, suite of assignments that the students have to do. It's all connected to the work that they're already doing in 122. So if they get something assigned in 122, they're using their 132 class to get extra feedback from the instructor, to get extra time to work on it, to ask clarifying questions. It's really just saturated support for the work that they're already doing in 122. How do we know which students might need extra support? One way is that they might just talk to you about it and express that they need it. Um, and or they might meet one of our indicators, which include things like high school GPA, ACT, SAT scores, and the results of their directed self-placement survey score. The survey is a collection of attitudinal reading comprehension and syntax mechanics questions. And it is basically just used to determine whether or not students might benefit from that SAI course. It results in a recommendation. All students should take it unless they're already bringing in credit for a law one course or they have high enough ACT, SAT scores to place into that upper option. The scores are posted in Slate, and when you run a query, you'll be able to see whether or not they receive that recommendation. So I've got the next couple of slides are just screenshots um, that I hope are helpful in terms of seeing these different options. The first is the advising portal where you can run the query for summer and fall 2023 English placement. And then once you actually run that, if you'll go to the next slide. Okay, so this is just a, a screen grab of what you see when you run that query. There's a column that says English placement, and this will give you information about which one of those options is appropriate for that student. So you can see in red for option A, it says English 132 along with English 122. That's letting you know that that student has received a recommendation for SAI. Mm -hmm. um, not a requirement, 
but if they have met some sort of indicator that says, hey, this student might benefit from taking that English SAI course along with English 122. The yellow shows what you'll see most commonly, which is it will say English 122, which could place them into option B. And then finally, what you'll see probably least is what's in, I don't know, is that green, teal, blue, whatever color that is. <laughs> um, option C, it says English 123. That's letting you know that that student could take the upper pathway, option C. That's super helpful. I also wanted to share uh, just quickly some data about the English 132, the SAI course. The chart that you see on this slide is showing about five years worth of data that we have now about how our 132 students do in English 122. And you can see the pass rates are um, quite high. Our average pass rate is sitting at about 89%. So we're pretty proud of that number in terms of you know the students that are opting to take that 132 course they are showing a lot of success in English 122. Mm -hmm. I also have a little note over to the side, um, which is probably just more geeky data than you all need, but I'm just gonna share it anyway, which is the, so I mentioned English 122 is a highly predictive course for retention and persistence, um, but the predictive grade is really in the mid B range. And about 65% of our 132 students are hitting that particular benchmark for prediction. So we're hoping to get that even higher, but our regular 122 students sit at about 75%. So either way, good data that shows, you know, students who might benefit from that particular support and achieving some success in a really highly predictive course. So this is great data. Thanks for sharing, Sarah. Of course. <laughs> Okay, so option B, the most common, law one plus law two, um, who should take this option? Students who don't need or don't want the SAI course. Um, how do we know which students should take this option? They don't have high enough test scores to place into option C, and they're not interested in the SAI. I've kind of said this several times, but um, there is considerable research about the recommended nature of the SAI. You really want to try to empower students to understand that course, why they might benefit it, benefit from the course, and to empower them to exercise their own agency in selecting that particular course. Okay, next slide. Option C, this is the upper pathway. Who should take this option? Students who might benefit from a more advanced writing pathway in order to complete the written communication component of the L of the LAC. Um, there are two ways that students might uh, be eligible for that particular pathway. One, they have high enough ACT or SAT scores to meet the prerequisite requirement to go right into that upper pathway, or they might bring in credit for a CO2 or law two course with no credit for a, a, a law one course. This is pretty common for Colorado State CSU transfers based on the way that their writing program is orchestrated over there. So those are a couple of ways that students might be placed into option C. So a final few tips for me, remember that English 132 is recommendation-based course. Just because you see that little entry mm -hmm. in the English placement doesn't mean you just automatically put the students in there. Ideally, you want to have a conversation with them about, you know, do you feel like you need this extra support? This is what this class is like. And then they can make that decision themselves. Um, option C is relatively new here at UNC, mm -hmm. kind of lagging behind other universities in terms of offering upper division writing requirement in the LAC. So mm -hmm. it's exciting and it needs some promotion. So please look for those students who can appropriately be placed in that upper pathway. It's pedagogically likely more appropriate for them and their learning and growth. Um, mm -hmm. So help me promote that would be great. And then finally, I work in the summer. Um, so please feel free to reach out to me. I've included my email there, but I also try to hang out on Teams as well if you need a quick question or some quick support. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, do we have any questions? Yes, okay, Frank. So for option C, I feel like I've only seen the advanced course once ever. Um, the 322. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never considered up further than the first year when I saw it. 
the advanced option because I don't see that option there. I think I, I think I just heard the, the question is something like um, you're rarely seeing that English 323 course on the schedule. So you're not yes. thinking yes. about yes. it. Is that here, right? Yeah. 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 So like I said, relatively new, really needs promotion to identify the students. Based on our student demographic, we don't have a lot. And with the SAT, ACT decline, we don't have a lot of students that are eligible for that particular pathway. So mm -hmm. scheduling that course and making numbers in the conditions of austerity that we are all facing at UNC is a real challenge for our department. But my understanding is that the English department offers it every spring, unless it doesn't make. So hopefully you can count on seeing it there. But again, unless we have the students to make the class, um, obviously it won't be offered. But I think we're seeing more and more uptake in terms of you know, the narrative around campus and the understanding of the new LAC. So hopefully we can count on that making at least every spring. Okay, wonderful. Do you have any other questions for Dr. Wood? Uh, concerning English placement? Yeah, Paige. Tara, can I share the example of the student you and I just talked about last week? Yes. Um, so a good clarifying question. I have a student who wants to go to law school. So saw a 323 advanced argument, really wanted to take that class and wanted to opt into the advanced track. And they hadn't taken English 122. And I had a misunderstanding, I think, in alignment with math placement and language placement that you could take the DSP to place into the mm -hmm. advanced track. And I just want to emphasize from Dr. Wood's slides that that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So in that conversation, I ended up talking to the student because they didn't do the ACT or SAT um, because it's increasingly test optional, right? Um, of taking that course as an elective. So they did start in the traditional 122, 123, and then taking 323 as an intended elective for that student. And so that may be a conversation you have if mm -hmm. you have a student who wants to actively opt in. That's where the DSP is a little bit different. It doesn't place students into the advanced track mm -hmm. at, in the same way that you have to admit calculus instead of college algebra and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So you may be having that conversation as an elective course rather than doing the advanced track at the LAC because only one of those will count for the CO2, but anything beyond that might mm -hmm. to be elective. Uh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep, and they would have to meet the prerequisite for 323 via CO2 yes. instead of specifically 123, right, Tara? That's the only... That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so they would have mm -hmm. to take not any course in this law 2 or CO2, but English 123 that's if their really aim is to take... That's a great example. 323. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, for the English 132, the supplemental yep. instruction class... Uh, is there any credit um, in that class, or is there an attendance requirement for students? There, uh, it is a one credit hour course, and the it's based on labor based kind of contract grading approach. So the students have a sense of you need to complete this percentage of these requirements. You need to attend and participate this percentage. And if you meet those, you're going to have this particular grade. So it's it's really more participation-based grading than any sort of quality assessment of their work in that class. And students have an understanding of that up front. It's articulated for all sections in a common syllabus. Yeah. Do we have any other questions for Dr. Wood? She has prepared a great one pager that's going to go into our shared resources document that's going to be coming. So hopefully if there are any other questions that pop up, um, you all know how to contact Dr. Wood. Um, and then we'll also have the shared document as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, everybody. All right. So plug and ride along as we have um, more uh, information to share today. I really, as just for you all to know, like my personal philosophy on how I want things to um, move forward is that one of the areas that I think we really can be um, working towards in terms of an inclusive environment for our students is to really focus in on those transfer students as well. Um, and so Jacob, our colleague from Ames is here to talk about um, our Ames to UNC incoming cohort. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. And Lucas did create a shared document too, which is going to be super helpful. But Paige, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Um, okay, so this resource was created by Lucas and will be shared with McKay to get to everyone, but language placement is very similar to what it has been in the past, in that there is an online placement for Spanish, Chinese um, coursework, and then Japanese, you will reach out to either hss.studentsuccess, which is our general HSS email, or Professor Don Holman. Dr. Holman is the chair of World Languages and Culture to arrange placement for Japanese language placement. Mm -hmm. And then American Sign Language, please work with the College of Education and Behavioral Sciences. Um, a couple things related to that. We have an FAQ that will be helpful for everyone. If a student wants to start a language or they want to refresh what they know and want to start at the 100 or 101 level, no placement is needed. Mm -hmm. Please just encourage them to enroll in that option, right? With Spanish, we did recently transition from Spanish 101 and 102 to Spanish 100 and Spanish 200. Mm -hmm. The distinction there is they went from five credit courses to three credit courses, which mm -hmm. we hope increases greater access. Absolutely. Know five credits can weigh heavily on the schedule. Mm -hmm. Both for Chinese and Japanese, 100 and one and 102 are still five credit courses. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit of variation there. Mm -hmm. um, but Spanish, the first and second level are now three credit courses. That does change prior learning credit in the world languages, mm -hmm. or just formerly known as retroactive language credit. <laughs> um, I'm stuck my registrar folks. I'm trying really hard to get what the catalog says. I promise. <laughs> um, that does mean that students can no longer earn a maximum of 16 credits in Spanish. The most credits that they can earn with prior language learning credit mm -hmm. is 12 credits okay. because of that switch from five credits to three credits mm -hmm. in those languages. If they have that for Chinese and Japanese, they still earn at most 16 credits mm -hmm. if they place into that 300 level. We are creating a separate, separate flyer um, for some of the mechanics of prior le language prior learning credit in the world languages, so that we will send that out and share that with McKay as well. That one's in the works, but it's a wonderful, wonderful option and a very cost-effective option mm -hmm. for folks who already have proficiency in a, a language, okay? Mm -hmm. um, other than that, the biggest thing is with the placement test, just please, please, please reach out to hss.studentsuccess or me or Lucas McCammon, especially on orientation days, we have Lucas stationed at his computer, so you can reach out to him mm -hmm. for overrides because it does take a little bit of time for the immersion language learning system, the placement-based website to mm -hmm. communicate with Banner and for that score to populate and so a test. And so if you need a override day of, or if the student took the placement test the night before orientation, so on and so forth, please have the student provide a screenshot of their results. We can also verify it as mm -hmm. needed in immersion. We do have that login information, but we can make those mechanics work. And that's all here, but feel free to reach out to Lucas on Teams. He'll be the best person on orientation days. You can also reach out to me or again, email hss.studentsuccess. <laughs> What's the bet most expedient way? Because this becomes a day of. Yes. What mm -hmm. is the fastest way to get a response from? Reach out to Lucas on Teams. Yeah. Just okay. people need to. And, Wonderful. Yeah. Don't, don't just say. Yeah. Anybody. Either a direct message or at or. Yeah. Yes. But he is, he is stationed at a computer for that very purpose. And so he will be a great person to communicate for all HSS things. We have him monitoring the chat, so on and so forth. Wonderful. Um, but that's how we can navigate some of those language placement pieces. So that's, that's for all the world languages? Except. So we're. World languages, yes, American Sign Language. Yes. Except for yes. yes, yes. Sign languages are different in every country. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you know. uh -huh. yeah. yes. McCammon. Yes. Big M, little C, big C, A M O N. And we are going to play around and hopefully come to fruition with the same thing that we did last year of having an NSO chat. And so those critical folks will be. On, on that chat, I think a practice that we would like to adopt ne uh, advisor uh, network wide is the pinging and actually adding someone that you need to talk to. Um, so yeah, we'll make sure that that goes smoothly. Um, thanks so much, Paige. Yes. Appreciate it. My only last thing is the not fun topic. 
we did uh, deactivate the language placement test for French and German. Mm -hmm. um, there is no longer even an option for coursework that students could take to earn that prior language learning credit in the world languages. So we are no longer offering that placement test. So they, of course, still could have coursework that mm -hmm. comes in. And you'll see that there are two, a few 400 level courses that are coming, but there's not a way for students to place into those. So by and large, French and German coursework is no longer available at UNC for incoming students. Um, if you encounter unique situations with someone who has a great deal of proficiency or a lot of prior learning credit, mm -hmm. transfer credit in the world languages, please don't hesitate to ask. But I also want to be real. Let's please don't foster hope in that conversation because mm -hmm. it's very unlikely that they will be able to pursue continued mm -hmm. mm -hmm. work. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paige. Appreciate you. Yeah. Please take food back to oh, your okay. colleagues, your student employees, what have you. Um, all right. Plug in right along. Um, Jacob, thanks so much for making your way over and coming to talk to us. We really appreciate it. Hi, everybody. My name is Jacob Sutton. For those of you who know me, good to see you again. And for those of you who don't, congratulations. <laughs> I am the advisor for the Ames TNC program. So when you're making your staffing request, you can say that we need another FTE just for all the Jacob's team chats and messages. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to come here and talk with you all today. I work over, my physical office is based at UNC, but I live in Teams and Outlook and mm -hmm. all the same systems that you all do every day. I'm in URSA. I'm checking degree works for all of our students. So um, the way that our program works is we want to have students who come to you as prepared as possible to be able to finish a bachelor's degree in two years. The way that they do that is they start at Ames through an associate's degree, and eventually they transition here to get their bachelor's. Um, we do this through a variety of tools. One of the biggest, this group and working with you all, and then also the statewide transfer articulation agreements and the special course substitutions that we can build between Ames and UNC. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on a lot of those things every day. Um, we do have three full-time staff as of today. Right. Um, can the online folks hear me okay? Okay. I think everybody's good. Yes. Good to okay, go. Good. Just want to make sure. Right? Okay. <laughs> awesome. We do have three full time staff, and each of us kind of has a different role with the program. Um, Steve Mitchell is our Ames to UNC program coordinator. So he oversees the big picture, making things function between the two schools, staff relationships, um, special student issues that come up. Um, we do have students who live here at UNC during their time at Ames. We have students who are accessing the campus for mm -hmm. facilities, services, events, activities, programs. Um, and so Steve is our, also overseeing our admissions and recruitment for the program. And so he's the guy who, if you're like, hey, we want to recruit more students for our programs, mm -hmm. we are recruiting your students over at Ames. We have a recruitment plan that we are doing to get you more students every single day. So if you want to partner on that with um, admissions and with Steve, he's the go-to for that. I oversee the advising for the program. Right now we have about 300 students on my caseload. I try and meet with each of them twice a semester. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are hopefully gonna be having another individual joining us in the future so that we can keep seeing the program grow. And then Jackie Chabot oversees our engagement activities and she also supports admissions for the program. So if you have an activity that you wanna promote and you want AIDS UNC students to come to, mm -hmm. send Jackie a message, let her know. We have a D2L shell for our students that we put all of the activities on that they can do to earn a special scholarship that Ames gives them while they're in the program. Mm -hmm. um, big thing with the program, we try and call it a transition program, not a transfer program. The idea is that these mm -hmm. students are socially and academically prepared when they do come to UNC. Um, we don't want them to be coming here and be like, I have no idea where the library is. I don't know where to find my bear number what the heck are immunizations and why do I have to turn them in? Mm -hmm. um, we ideally want all of those things taken care of so that by the time you meet with a student, they're registration ready, they know what the last two years of their degree should look like academically and socially, they're hopefully gonna be more successful because they've, they've been on this campus before, they've attended activities, events, they've plugged into programs, they know you all, they know who their faculty are. That's really the big goal is that those students are prepared when they come. Um, uh, just a little bit about the benefits of Ames to UNC. So like I mentioned, we have the access to the UNC campus, the advising, um, which is where I come in and you all hear from me a lot. 
Um, the dual experience, um, some students will live on campus or just be on campus quite a bit and become present over here. Um, yes, that does mean some of them have parking tickets and we try and take care of that before <laughs> they come as well. Um, and we try and communicate all those requirements to them as well, but they're like, oh, well, I thought I'd get lucky. And I'm like, you never will, never. <laughs> um, we do also, Ames has invested a lot of resources in this program for students who have a 3.0 GPA. They meet with me twice a semester and they do an engagement activity either through our program or report something they did at UNC twice a semester. We give up to $500 a semester in scholarship money to them um, that they can receive while they're at Ames in the program. <laughs> Um, additionally, just a little bit about our tuition structure. If a student is a Weld County tax resident, in 2023-2024, the tuition rate will be $77 per credit hour. Um, if they're in-state, it's $122 per credit. If they're WUI, it's $183 per credit. And out-of-state is $461 per credit. Mm -hmm. um, as you all know, that's a really hard tuition rate to beat. And so mm -hmm. for students who are really just financially conscious of, I don't know if I can afford education, mm -hmm take this PowerPoint, show them it, give them my card, and we can talk and see if this is a better route for them financially, because I wish something had been like this when I was around in college. I'm one of seven kids, and so uh, my parents were like, best of luck. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wish that I'd had an option like this. And then, of course, for students who are denied admission, if they have a denied admission decision in Slate, they automatically receive an email encouraging them to apply to UNC. So for those students who weren't able to get into UNC on their first time, um, 99% of the time they will get in at Ames and uh, we will be able to get them into classes and hopefully um, hopefully we can make them have a successful experience at Ames to be ready for when they do come here. Do you think really quick, Jacob, we can identify Louis for maybe folks who don't Oh yes, Western <laughs> Undergraduate Exchange. So the states included in that are Wyoming, Utah. Pretty much the entire West Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so to apply to the program, um, students, uh, they do have to first become admitted students at Ames. So I get every single day about five phone calls saying, hey, I want to do Ames UNC. And I'm like, great, let's get you applied to Ames first. Mm -hmm. um, part of that is the way that the data flows between the two schools. They have to have an Ames academic record, get admitted, get enrolled in their first semester of classes, and then they can apply to Ames to UNC, which then triggers them getting a bare number, a bare mail address, living in the UNC system, being coded as non-degree seeking Ames to UNC with a cohort code. Mm -hmm. um, and so those though, there will be identifiers for you all if a student were to ever reach out to you that exists um, within Banner and URSA and Slate and so many other places. Mm -hmm. um, we require students, um, they can stay in the program, but to graduate from Ames, they have to have a 2.0 GPA. And if they have a 3.0, they can earn our scholarship. This does help line them up for UNC's admissions-based transfer scholarships, which are awarded to students 2.75 or higher. Um, and additionally, like I mentioned, we try and have students who are engaged and prepared and ready for UNC whenever that does come. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a reminder, not all students who attend UNC after Ames will have been in our program. As much as I think every student who wants to go to UNC should join our program, some students don't for a variety of reasons. A lot of times that's because they're exploring their multiple transfer possibilities mm -hmm. through our transfer services department, which is also what my coworker Jackie Chabot oversees in our office. So we are seeing a lot of students who, you know, they really want to join, but they have to have at least two semesters in our program to be able to join. If they're just coming last semester, we immediately connect them with the UNC admissions representative for Ames and with transfer services to get them ready to come here. Um, so academic standing, this is one that I get a lot and this is a UNC um, decided policy. So I just wanna make sure that you all understand this is from UNC's senior leadership. Students who are on academic pro or academic suspension are not able to apply to Ames to UNC. They cannot be here accessing the campus and have those program benefits. So therefore they can't join the program while they are on academic suspension. Your students on academic probation can, and I will work with you and I will work with them and we will have them come back on fresh start. We will make sure that they come with 60 beautiful transfer credits mm -hmm. of coursework mm -hmm. to be halfway done with their bachelor's degree or more when they do come back. These are names, love it. Um, a little bit about program st statistics. We do, um, my, our program coordinator, Steve, works with various folks at UNC to manage a Power BI dashboard for Ames to UNC. Um, and so 
these numbers do change every semester as Steve works with Laura Byers and works with admissions and everybody else to make sure that all the cohort codes and everything are updated accurately. Mm -hmm. um, so of course this will change probably by the next time you even look at it. Um, but in general, about 118 students have come to UNC through this program. Some of the top majors here listed, um, we are seeing students who are coming both to on-campus and extended campus programs. Um, we don't limit them to just on-campus programs. If, if extended campus is the right thing for them, then we work with them to get into those programs mm -hmm. appropriately. Mm -hmm. Really cool data. And anyone can, yeah, most anyone can access that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then for fall 2023, I wanted you all to know what's coming. Um, so the data are changing daily because our students um, do have the ability to enroll in their summer classes right now. And I have all kinds who are like, yeah, I can do 12 credits over the summer and then be at UNC by fall. And I'm like, are you sure about that? <laughs> um, but we're going to work with them either way for whatever their plan may be. And if they aren't going to come in fall, we will make sure that their UNC classes get dropped. Admissions gets deferred a semester. Um, so that way we can get them prepared. But as of Actually, yesterday, it's already changed. It is now 75 students who are coming to UNC or, or who are graduating from Ames this fall who are eligible to come to UNC. 47 of, the, 47 of those students have registered as of yesterday. 48. Um, 48. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so now we have kind of our top majors. So business administration has 10 and then software engineering does have three. So that's 13 for MCB. We have 10 psychology transfers. Human services has seven, but it's actually going to be eight now because of a student who decided they wanted to do that major yesterday. Um, I have six criminal justice, six for sport and exercise science, and that's human performance, exercise science, and physical education, three early childhood education, three that are history education or history liberal arts two elementary education, and then two economics. And I have another one who reached out to me last night, um, and he's going to be here in the fall for English education. So we're seeing, I mean, it's across the board too. I would say like, yes, these are our most popular programs, but we also have one music education student coming in the fall. We have um, one art and design and one graphic design. And so um, I did list the ones that just had like two or higher on here to keep the list kind of succinct, but um, we do have students in almost every major coming. Um, the only majors that students can't join is nursing unless they choose to apply as a health sciences student and then apply to the nursing program. And so I do actually have one health sciences public health student also coming in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, several of these students have, we are working with them to get on your calendars that are all through the advising website. So they are, they are signing up for appointments with you. We are reaching out to every student who has steps left to be ready to register at UNC, and we're working with them to accomplish those steps. Um, if a student is missing coursework, for instance, you can send a message to me or Steve. Um, I'm pretty responsive on Teams, so if you get me, I can get an unofficial transcript to you and then have our records and registration team send an official transcript um, mm -hmm. electronically so that way it can get evaluated, honestly, probably by the next day. Mm -hmm. um, and then these students, a lot of them attended Destination UNC on March 9th. That was one of the events we really promoted. And then a lot of them will be attending new student orientation or the specific transfer student orientation this summer. So we're trying to plug them into that, that as well. Hopefully they're registered before orientation anyway, which will make everyone's day a lot easier that day. Mm -hmm. um, just some advising resources. These are just for you all to know. Um, we do have an Ames to UNC website that's UNC hosted that you can get information on anytime if a student wanted information or their families especially. Um, it has FAQs on there that especially kind of answer a lot of questions about the program. Curriculum maps and transfer guides. Um, this has been something I've been working on for the last year and a lot of you have been hearing about it as the STAAs got updated and the Colorado Community College System switched to four digit course numbers and then new degrees were added at both schools. Um, we've been working to try and get these updated, um, a special thanks to the registrar's office, especially Jennifer atterbury Cherico, um, who probably doesn't want to hear from me ever again. Um, we are also working with a lot of faculty to get special substitutions, so that way students just don't just transfer with 60 credits, they transfer with the 60 right credits as close to the four-year plans that you all would give them as possible. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, so those are already being updated. You're going to see a lot of those um, there, and that's going to help. That's how those students know oh yeah, I think this is the last two years of courses I'm gonna need, which should hopefully make building their transfer degree plans easier. Um, uh, just a reminder about the cooperative registration agreement. This comes up all the time, and especially I hear from UNC students who wanna utilize it. And I have students who I have utilized this, and if I can, 
I think it's really a great way for them to academically prepare for UNC mm -hmm. to take a UNC class before they start here. Um, and I've had so many students who have done, especially Intro to Human Services and some of those other courses, and it's been exactly what they needed to get ready to start and also to commit to UNC. A student is not committed to this program until after the drop deadline when they are officially locked and loaded in those classes. At any time, they could drop those courses and they could go to another school in Colorado. And so um, we don't consider a student transitioned until they've gotten through that point. Um, so yeah, and then if there's special courses, like for instance, we offer Psychology of Death and Dying um, every fall and spring semester. That's a great one a student likes to take at AIM sometimes. We also have courses that we don't currently offer like um, the organic chemistry classes. We just don't have enough students to run those. And so sometimes I'm like, oh, can I find a student who can take like a three and a half hour class at UNC twice a week? Um, not always possible, but if it is, we try and make it work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I guess beyond that, it's the big requirement is they have to have 12 credits at their home school to qualify for it. Um, also that they should confirm with their advisor, those are 12 degree applicable credits, not just random credits. Mm -hmm. um, we've also had that come up where students are like, yeah, I enrolled in eight credits of sport and exercise science PE courses. And we're like, <laughs> it has to count towards your degree. Right. Um, so little things like that. Um, but if you do have a student who you're like, hey, I think they need a co-op class. If you want to send me a message, we can talk about what that might look like just so you have the information on the AIM side. Thanks. And then the last thing I wanted to ask you all is how you want to collaborate. Um, I've been so fortunate to have co-advising with a lot of you. I send students to you and I tell students I will count one of their AIM UNC advising appointments for the scholarship as an appointment they have with their UNC advisor. There's no reason mm -hmm. that I don't trust that they can come over here and get even better information than what I can give them. Um, we also have had a great opportunity. I really appreciate um, Andrew Smith. I've been having all of my health students meet with him, my pre-health students, to talk about those co-curricular experiences he recommends year by year for them. And we're getting those students added into the UNC pre-health Canvas advising shell. So that way they have access to that. Um, the students, we are, we are trying to create really, really holistic advising. We use a case management model. So also for students who fall into special populations, maybe they're undocumented DACA first generation, um, maybe they are low income, low SES Pell eligible, maybe they um, maybe they have specific needs for gender identity or um, other related identities that we want to get them plugged into. So we are really trying to get them plugged into everything. So that way they, we can also just make sure that in terms of the college mental health crisis that we're also addressing that. Um, and so there's a lot of really good collaboration that I think we can continue doing. Um, collaboration with UNC admissions. Like I mentioned, they have representatives who are coming over to the Ames campus. So especially if you're like, hey, we're not getting a lot of students from Ames and we just want to make sure that those programs are being recruited for over there. Mm -hmm. Definitely tell them and also collaborate with us because we're recruiting for those programs too. Um, I will continue to always give regular program updates as they're pertinent. I don't want to overwhelm you all because I know all of you have pretty loaded calendars and email inboxes too, but um, whatever's helpful, I always want to share. Um, we also, we, we have a lot of non-Ames UNC students who are getting kind of missed. So for one thing, the mill levy override that Greeley Evans District 6 voters passed pays for students to take their high school college level coursework at Ames, at their local high school or online. And we also have students who attend the early college academy who are graduating with an associate's degree. So a lot of those students are sometimes getting kind of missed because they're not part of this Ames to UNC funnel. So if you think there's ways that you think those students should be recruited, mm -hmm. communicate that to us, to admissions, so we can figure out how to get them kind of um, connected to UNC as well. And then lastly, for students taking coursework at Ames, I've had so many of you who have gotten students to take classes at Ames this summer or in another semester when they need it. Mm -hmm. um, I am always happy to help with that. Um, I might not be able to meet with them, but at least over email, I've had, I think, over a dozen students who are taking classes there this summer already. Mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned, if they can show that they're a Weld County tax resident, they get that $77 per credit tuition rate. So um, it's not a bad idea for some of them to squeeze in that extra course and transfer it back. Uh, is there anything else that I can do for you all to help collaborate and do more? Are there things that you all need? A couple of things I thought of is like getting together on the STAAs and figuring out on mm -hmm. both sides some of the gaps with that. Um, with the state, there's some gaps. And then I think within advising, there are certain programs that we don't recommend students finish a, an associate's degree like um, 
physical education and special education um, just because we don't offer enough courses and we're not going to waste a student's financial aid. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, anything that you all think of, let me know how we can collaborate. And I also, I have some y'all who have come over and met with students on the Ames campus. I actually had Kellen Dominguez there mm -hmm. two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and she was able to get seven business students registered for their fall classes in one day. And I'm happy to help coordinate it and plan it and do it. Love to hear it. Yeah. Anything else? Do we have any questions for Jacob? I think a lot of questions. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. So then, yeah, questions if you ever want to get a hold of us. Um, Steve Mitchell is our program coordinator. He's the main person who oversees all the function of the program. Um, Jackie really focuses on programming. Um, and then I'm advising. And then in the future, we're hoping to hire an Ames GNC student success coach who will also be a part of this group, hopefully, and also be helping to advise a caseload so that we can mm -hmm. really recruit and send over a lot of students to UNC every year. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jacob. Well, thank you. All right. So with the remainder of our time, I really just want to open up the floor um, for updates. Um, and then I have some certificates to give out to our SEEDS people who have completed our um, call to adventure advising training. Um, but with that being said, our colleagues from Office of the Registrar are here. Um, is there anything in particular that y'all feel the need to share today? Yes. Yeah, we just had a couple of things. First of all, I want to introduce Michelle Fryer to everyone. She's our newest registrar. Um, she has been an added to the advice chat group. Some of you probably yes. already talked to her, so she seems some smart too. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just want to let you know the catalog will be published on June first, um, so that will be ready to roll. We are so very close. We have minor changes now. Um, we brought back the LACPDF. Yes. <laughs> um, and then the new curriculum updates, I've asked Jen to throw that into the advisor chat also. That shows what new programs, <laughs> um, new programs, uh, new minors, certificates, licensures, and any changes for prefixes and any of that. So she'll put that in the advisor chat as soon as she is. Um, she has one. Charlie needs to just look it over one more time. What's good, right? So, and then is there a web presence for that? Let's go back to you know, our chat sweeps data. There's not a web presence for that, but we also send it to email. Great. And mm -hmm. probably a lot of you are probably on the email too. So, mm -hmm. um, it's a it like goes to all the yeah, faculty and staff. So, awesome. <laughs> um, and let me know that degree planner updates for 23 24 will be done by the end of May. So, you'll be able to start using those. Mm -hmm. And then we had a question. We have had um, it, this has been brought to us about doing pens early, like maybe two weeks early. I just for school year. Yeah. The question, the the one comment I do have is that the schedule will not. You know, usually we sync the two. The schedule will cannot be done two weeks early because the way the schedulers deadlines are. Mm -hmm. I was one of the people who asked for that. And I think at least for us, that would be okay because we need like student leaders or seniors where they're taking they're taking classes in our unit that we know they're offered in Okay. So I think that that would be okay. Because what would be that why wouldn't we just make it's September 3rd? Why not just already have the things ready for the next semester? Because we do have some areas that have such an immense Maybe Jamie, a super size. <laughs> right. And if we have bumped it up, you know, previously, I just, I, I see that I, the goal was to kind of align it within the schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of whatever you're advising, you may not know the schedule. Most people are starting so, advising way before when you're releasing it anyway. It is, it, we will do, we can do that. But I, I just want everyone just to understand that the schedule will not be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as long as everybody's and okay with that. have to practice like reminding people when the schedule will be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. I will bring that back to everybody. How early would you be able to? No, no, no. <laughs> We're not going to go there. So, can we have the screen? Yeah. Yeah. These calls ready to roll. It'll probably be just a couple of weeks early. Well, mm -hmm. Just because we have to make sure that, I mean, A, we have to, we have to make sure that they at least make it through the 
deadline? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we use it through census dates. It's kind of what we try. Mm -hmm. But then it takes some time because you have to remember we have to then coordinate with the special populations and make sure those pens are looked at. So it does take us some time too. It's not just like you push a button and we get the pens. Mm -hmm. So it does, we do need some time after that census date. So we will work with a date with our group and then we will send it out to you guys when we can do that. Cool. Star, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't need but love it. <laughs> And then any, and if you guys have any questions for us, please, I know you guys all know how to use the chat, there, <laughs> but um, please let us know. Um, we've divided the team back, kind of. Michelle is overseas Bear Central and transfer. Ken oversees graduation and VA. And Laura oversees um, registration, scheduling, both course and room. And catalog and curriculum. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking, I'm asking McCabe while you're sharing that. Yes. If we can put in our guide for the summer, like their little like circle base, and here's the main thing that you, yeah, that we can start to use to yeah. ping to ping for what. So yeah. 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 Absolutely. Or not that we're going to bring some old men. They're available. <laughs> Someone <laughs> help me. <laughs> our staff is so knowledgeable. You know, yes. Things, but just so everybody knows, and you're mm -hmm. always free to reach out to me. Solid. I, I don't do anything, so I'm just <laughs> always there. Okay. Oh, and it's still, still residency. Sorry, I forgot. Yes. yes, he is still residency. And we will be having degree planner trainings with Ken this summer. So we'll have a special student populations one, and then we'll have one that's open to just general academic advising. So those are um, the slate of summer offerings that we have. We probably don't need to do this, but when you said the updates will be available, who are you? Yes, and you have everybody. You're back there. I don't know the answer, but Ken, what, what, what do you mean by that? What so the, are the coming out? The camera. Will be available. Uh -huh. So we'll have the special student populations, and those of you who advise those areas, I have believe everyone's been invited. June sixth, and then June twentieth will be um, open to everybody. Great. Um, really quick, uh, I know that we're running short on time, but um, some things I want to bring to your attention are summer PD opportunities. We will be having an advisor network meeting on June 28th with a meet and greet with our university odd bun, uh, alms bud person, um, which will be, <laughs> words are hard, um, which will be really helpful, I think, for us to understand how to advocate both for ourselves and help to advocate for our students. Um, we're going to have our advisor network retreat on July 20th. That will be... Yeah, um, really focused in on launching our new probation program that we will be piloting for the upcoming academic year. And then on July 26th, our colleagues in the DRC will be coming and training us on how to best help support students who are seeking out services through the Disability Resource Center. So we'll have lots of activity going on this summer. Um, before we kind of break out, uh, I do want to take a second to congratulate um, our colleagues who have completed the call to adventure and to bring out the call for the rest of our advisor network to set a goal to try to have um, completion of this by uh, the beginning of next academic year. So I want to bring up our SEEDS people quickly for their certificates. We got Hannah, Jamie, Jen, and Galen. So I just want to say thank you all for really leading the charge on that and um, helping us to see that it's going to be Do have office. your office across from Hannah. <laughs> 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 I'll guilt you into that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. My office yes, everybody. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Perfect. Thanks, y'all. Not to be left out, we do have some colleagues who have made really significant progress in completing the call to adventure. And I know the way that Haley, um, Dr. Blackburn, set it up is that there were different tiers. So this is our group of wise mentors. So obviously, if you have questions, talk to them. Um, but we do have some other colleagues who have put in significant amount of work. This is also very impressive and exciting. And so um, I just want to shout out um, 
our colleagues who I think almost everyone is here today, um, either online or in person. So trustee sidekick um, tier means that our colleagues have completed 14 hours worth of uh, material within the training. And then Hero Support has completed eight hours of training. So congratulations to all y'all who have made it. Um, and those of you who are still working through it, let's let's make it a goal to have 100% completion by the end of the spring. So awesome. Thank you so much. A reminder why mm -hmm. we do that is because we want to be able to say no matter who we go to in our advisor network, that mm -hmm. we have a common mm -hmm. core of training that we've received, that we can trust that the information that we give you that the core elements are um, shared. Among Absolutely. Absolutely. So the training is one of the ways that we do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, Frank, yes. Yes. Absolutely. So for any test, um, there's going to be a couple new majors. Yes. Computer science, yes, and a statistics, yes. These are going to be housed in mathematics. Yes. <clears throat> Both of them have brand new courses that will be offered, and they're going to have new faculty as well. Mm -hmm. um, ideology and speech language sciences is changing its name. Mm -hmm. It will now be communication sciences and disorder, mm -hmm. going from ASLS to CST. That was that's a flash, that's a throwback, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then um, we're making some changes to how advising is done in the NHS Advising Center. Yes. Uh, some of the areas. Um, so the following majors will be advised all four years by a professional advisor. Mm -hmm. So that's biology, <laughs> chemistry, communication sciences and disorders, dietetics, health sciences, nutrition, and sport and exercise science. Yes. So the ones who've already transitioned over are staying with them. Um, and then as with the faculty and as new ones come in, they'll be kept within the center. Mm -hmm. That's for a new cohort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, up to, and then keeping what we have now, not transitioning, mm -hmm. depending on the department. And it's going to be run mm -hmm. kind of as a pilot program um, to show some others that who might not be really fully into the idea yet, the how to. Yes. We love it. Love to see it. And some co advising, I mean, you'll still be working with the faculty. The faculty will move into a mentor role. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. talking to the departments, the, um, what's been put to the faculty is that they do more mentoring and advising mm -hmm. and help them find opportunities and various things like that. So, I'm hoping. The department, I don't know, get committees or put something together to really have that be the focus and something that they Because I know biology went ahead and by being within the department, there was always a focus on it because the people would talk about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the mentoring will go through something similar where they can create something that is continual. Mm -hmm. That's it. And Becky did compile it was so helpful that list of who was going to be specifically point advising all of those different majors and those switch ups and so that's something that i'm hopeful that we can have for all departments is a just a quick resource guide as to who is the point person for which majors on campus okay. yes the crazy <laughs> the the chaos coordination list right <laughs> i love it yes Okay. Um, I know that we are at time. Um, I we have this room for a while, so if anybody's available to stay and wants to give more updates, fine. Um, if not, we will use our shared resource to talk about notable curriculum changes and updates and programs um, and make that available to everybody. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who made it here today. You are awesome. Thanks so much for all that you do. And um, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. I will be sending out a state of probation report 
at the beginning of June once we've completed suspension um, and appeals hearings. So that will be coming. And I hope that everybody enjoys your, um, hopefully a little bit of downtime before NSO starts. Thanks for being here. Please take food. We have more than enough. And I will be, um, I will be making sure that all these resources that we saw today are going to be available to everybody. So thanks again um, and happy end of the semester. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Right.